So I was on Discord the other day and talking to my friends and I was taking apart my other remote in the process and I noticed it had a UFO connector connecting the antenna and I was like, I wonder if my long range remote or the one I use for long range, not necessarily long range, remote has UFL connectors as well. So I pop this little guy apart and sure enough it does and it is as well diversity from what I can tell. It, it appears to be diversity but there's a chance that one of the antennas on the inside is for telemetry but I highly doubt it considering where it's coming out. So I, I was just kind of going through Amazon. I was like, oh I could use a little wire like this because I want to attach my own antenna because that would be really great for a ground station or something. And I came across a listing that had some UFL connectors and a gigantic antenna. I sent it to my friend and he was like, you have to do that. Find the most overkill thing you can on Amazon and give it a shot. So, I of course did exactly that. So I have the biggest 2.4 gigahertz stick antennas you'll ever see. <laughs> and I'm going to show you all how to mount them to the outside of this or how to put the UFL to our PSMA connector in as well. The first step in this process is obviously to take the remote apart. Obviously I've already got the uh, battery out, you should do the same. So when we take the remote apart we'll start with the screws on the outside and also underneath these rubber covers there are two screws as well. And the best way I've found to open those up is with a little chisel X-Acto blade. And if you just take the X-Acto blade and pry up a little bit in the right place. If you're wondering, it's not sitting on the stick, it's, it's sitting on the uh, neck harness connector. So I'm not destroying my transmitter. <laughs> Alright, with the grips off, we will proceed to remove the screws, and as you can see, there's a screw there and a screw here as well. All right, inside of the transmitter, you'll see right next to this silver uh, transmitter chip, there are two UFL connectors. You can't quite see that one. It's, it's hiding down there. But uh, this one here, it's labeled antenna one. It goes to this antenna here at the top. And that one, antenna two, goes to the primary antenna that goes out the front. So for what we're doing here, just go ahead and remove both of those. But on mine personally, I'm going to leave the uh, original whip antenna just because I think it looks weird having a hole there, and since it's, I'm adding two antennas, it wouldn't make sense to put one directly in the middle. Alright, that's the first antenna out. You can see it just has the UFL on it, and I'm, I'm hoping it's diversity because this one's sideways and it would make sense for this one to be sideways and this one to be up, like you would usually have it. And if it is actually diversity, that means this will work really well. These are 9 dBi antennas, by the way, which means they're very directional. So my plan is to have one horizontal with the horizon and one that is perpendicular to the horizon. But it should give me a pretty good range. Also, when I first opened up my controller, that ribbon cable that goes down to the screen was about to fall out so you might want to check that in yours as well but be very careful that you don't cut or scratch or anything the ribbon cable because if you do you're not gonna have a screen when you turn this back on anyway I'll also remove this UFL connector so because I'm gonna leave the original antenna and I'm going to go ahead and electri electrical tape that connector just to make sure it doesn't short on any of the chips. All 
Alright, so you've made it this far and this is when you do the part that requires commitment. If you don't want to proceed with this mod, don't go any farther because it involves sharp tool things. So I'm going to, anyway, I'm doing it because I want to see what happens. <laughs> I'm going to find a drill bit that is about the size of this and a little bit larger. You can line it up just like that and that, actually that's perfect first try. That's the one I'm going to use. Um, and I'm, I've decided that I'm going to run the antennas about here on both sides and we'll see how that goes just because there is just barely enough room right there for me to slide the uh, connector in and hopefully all the way through but because there's a lot of delicate electronics in here and uh, potentiometers we don't want to hit I'm gonna start off with a teeny tiny little drill bit just because I'll, I'll make a little pilot hole where I want it and like that anyway cut to a very 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 fast scene of me trying to drill a hole Alright, I have the antennas in and stuck them on and it looks pretty good. These aren't perfect because I didn't do it perfectly. You should learn from my mistakes. I had it going the wrong way, but now that you can see it now, this is how it goes and how it works. But I'm going to go ahead and screw the potentiometers back down and thread these through and connect them. So we're going to do this one antenna 1 and this one antenna 2. I think that's the order they're in. Alright, I'll be back shortly. Alright, I have both connectors and both antennas connected. The primary antenna is taped off and the connector is hidden back behind the gimbal, so... That should, in theory, potentially maybe work. Alright, so... Next thing to do is put the entire thing back together like it came apart. So, obviously, don't forget the connectors, those still exist. Anyway, I'll get back to you when that's all done. Alright, now that all the screws are put back into the uh, cover of the remote, we can go ahead and test to see if this mod actually works or, you know, if we were successful at all and we're able to turn this remote on. As you can see, that's my antenna placement. Um, I did make some mistakes with the holes and one of them's a little bit too big and they're not quite centered. I didn't know exactly where these antennas would fit, so it, it became a little bit of a <laughs> trial and error kind of thing. But that's why I'm doing it first is so you can learn from my mistakes and do even better. But anyway, I have the battery plugged in at the back. And since this is a transmitter, we'll make sure we screw the antennas on first before we turn anything on. Because if you don't, it might just blow up and that wouldn't be any good, would it? Come on. The fresh connectors, the pins don't go in very well sometimes. <laughs> and this one. By now you should be uh, very aware of the overkill nature of this. With the antenna screwed on, we'll go ahead and fire up the remote. I'm holding the buttons down on this one and look at that, it turns on. So we didn't fry anything. Hopefully you won't either. <laughs> but yeah, there you have it. I'll go ahead and I'm going to tip the camera up a bit here so you can see this. <laughs> Can't take antennas. I love it. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your mod on your remote. And this should work on all different types of remotes if they have a UFL connector and a place you can drill a hole in the case. Anyway, signing off.